Welcome back to Emotions and Potions, a love slash hate letter to you with your hosts, Ashton and Alex. Hi, welcome back. It's time for another episode. This week, we are taking on a Sarah Kate romance novel by the name of Praise. And it's also part of a series. The Salacious Players Club series. Very excited to talk about this one. Debrief. Yes. This is a book we've seen all over TikTok and wanted to figure out what the hype was about. And I think we did. I think we did too. So Ashton, why don't you start us off with those content and trigger warnings. All right. So in praise, you will come across an age gap romance, ex-boyfriend's father romance, a workplace romance, taboo slash forbidden romance, BDSM club and themes, praise, degradation, dom slash sub relationship dynamic, transphobia, parental abandonment, emotional abuse, toxic relationships, and infidelity. Well, that's a lot. It is, but... It's usually a lot. (laughs) It could be worse. A lot going on, but all good things in my my opinion. Well, you know, for reading. (laughs) Not in general. (laughs) Not in life. Not in life. Not transphobia. Or the infidelity. Or the infidelity. Or toxic relationships. But the, like, sexy stuff. Yeah, like, the first part of those. Like, the dynamics, like, the ex-boyfriend's dad, the dom sub, the age age gap. gap. Those are all fun, right? Yeah. All right, Alex. (laughs) So, (laughs) let's break into the synopsis of Praise by Sarah Kate. All right. He calls me perfect. His flawless pet. His good girl. Broken down and wounded by my emotionally neglectful ex, I wanted someone to tell me I was good enough. Then I stumbled into a new job with a boss who brings me to my knees. Literally. He has me do things a real secretary would never do. Emerson Grant tells me I'm more than just good enough. I'm worthy of his praise. There are a million reasons why I should stay away. The owner of the Salacious Players Club is not just my new boss, he's twice my age, and he's my ex-boyfriend's father. With him, I am treasured. I am adored. I am his. I'm a good girl, but I'm falling for the wrong man. Emerson Grant knows what he wants, and he wants me. So how far will I go to hear his approval? That was a pretty good synopsis. I liked that. Yeah. It didn't really give a whole lot away, just the dynamic between the three main characters yeah it kind of leads you to believe that it's a single pov book when this is a dual pov though yeah because there's no like emerson point of view in the synopsis which you get a lot of times with dual yeah that's true that would be my only critique of it this is a dual pov so it's gonna be a male and a female emerson and charlotte also known as charlie okay so before we break into our plot breakdown and kind of talk about this book what tasty concoction did you make up today? Because this thing looks like it's about 5,000 calories of just chocolatey goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so I have for you the Millionaire's Affogato. Okay. And what is, what is in that? So this is some vanilla gelato, some espresso. And then I topped it with some whipped cream, and I did some dark chocolate shavings. And also um, topped it off with a Ferrero Rocher hazelnut Nice. Thing. Wow. Because, like, the two important places in this book are, like, the diner that, like, Charlie and Emerson go to a lot for lunch. And the BDSM sex club for, like, millionaires. So I want it with, like, diner drink. But make it fancy. But make it fancy. I think you succeeded. Let's try this bad boy. I haven't tried it yet. I wanted to save my first sip. Chaz. Oh, wow. Yummy. Good job, Alex. Thank you. That's fantastic. Fantastic. And I think that that is going to give me the energy boost that I need to get through this episode. So should we just let's steam get in- on right ahead? <laughs> yeah, let's get into that plot breakdown. Emerson Grant and his four friends have been in the media business for a long time, and they are feeling burnt out. They also all have another interest in common. They like to partake in more than just vanilla sex. When the company they work for crashed, the group decide to get into business together to create a kink-based matchmaking dating service app. Flash forward 
a few years later, this app has become so popular, a now 40-year-old Emerson and the friends are now going to be opening a BDSM club, the Salacious Players Club, or SPC. A 21-year-old Charlotte, or Charlie Underwood, has just officially broken up with her cheating boyfriend, Bo Grant. Charlie wants her half of the security deposit, and Bo has informed her the check is at his estranged father's house, and he will not be talking to him to get it. So if she wants her half, she needs to take it up with him herself. What a dick. Just start off strong. Yeah. Real quick, we realize why they're no longer together. Yeah. So Charlie, very much needing her part of the money, goes to Bo's dad's house. Well, actually, Mantrin, to get her check back. Unfortunately, he isn't home yet, but the housekeeper seems to be expecting her and points her to wait in the office. Charlie's confused as it's not like she has a meeting set with this man. When the housekeeper goes to leave, she informs Charlie Mr. Grant will be back soon. You might want to be waiting on your knees for him. What an introduction. Right? Emerson enters the room, commanding Charlie to get on her knees and lets her know that she's lovely. Charlie's surprised by how the praise makes her feel and that she is attracted to this man. And she shouldn't be because it's obviously her ex-boyfriend Bo's dad. And this is a very anti-feminist behavior for her. It gets cleared up that Charlie is not Emerson's new secretary, but Bo's ex-girlfriend wanting to collect security deposit checks. Emerson apologizes for the confusion, and Charlie asks for more money, $500 to be exact, to keep this awkward encounter quiet. She winds up walking away with the deposit check plus an additional $5,000. To celebrate the extra cash, Charlie takes her mom and sister out for dinner and plans on getting her sister VIP tickets to an upcoming anime con. Even after the encounter, Charlie can't stop thinking about Emerson and decides to do some digging on him and finds out that he is the owner of the SPC. And she starts learning about the world of kink through Madam Kink's website. She discovers info about Praise Kink, and it starts to resonate with her, but she's not ready to deal with that realization yet. Emerson has also not been able to get Charlie off of his mind, Plus, he thinks she may be the key to helping him reunite with his son. Not a good idea. No. So he decides to go to Charlie's workplace at the local skating rink and offer her a job to be his real secretary, not his (laughs) sub-secretary. Not the kinky kind. (laughs) Which will obviously not include the kneeling (laughs) and actual secretary work. To which Charlie accepts. Cue the makeover montage. Charlie goes to the mall to get new sexy professional work clothes and lingerie. I don't know why you would need lingerie for a new secretary job, but she's Complete feeling it. Complete the fantasy, baby. Uh, yeah, and he's hot, so she's probably like, well, okay. Unfortunately, she runs into Bo and his new girl while there, and he berates her for not getting his half of the security deposit back. Oh, he's the worst. Thankfully, our girl realized she doesn't have to take his shit anymore and walks off. On Charlie's first day of work, she is wearing a sheer blouse, which Emerson enjoys and slightly wishes she was his submissive secretary. He resists his temptations. That gets more difficult when the pair must go on to the SPC, which is under construction and set to open soon. Charlie meets Drake, the contractor, who flirts with Charlie Anne Garrett, another SPC partner, and Emerson's best friend, who shows Charlie the throne room. Both interactions have Emerson jealous and possessive, which makes him lash out at Charlie in a belittling fatherly way, which she does not like at all. As Charlie wants Emerson to see her as a woman and his equal, not his son's ex, as she is starting to look at him as a man, not Bo's dad. After work, Charlie takes her sister to a comic book store to pick up a new manga that winds up being sold out. Charlie uses her new confidence and feminine wiles to secure her sister a copy of the book. I love that scene. That was so great. It was. A few weeks later, Charlie has settled into her new secretarial role well. Emerson has been wanting to know more about Bo, but doesn't want to use Charlie to get this information as he has learned about how his son did not treat Charlie well and has caused some of her self-doubt issues. While they are discussing the upcoming SPC opening party, 
Charlie suggests Emerson take a date to the event to ward off women coming up to him. She then reads his palm and explains that he is destined for a deep, earth-shattering love like her, foreshadowing much. (laughs) Emerson invites Charlie to be his date, to which she accepts and he kisses her. The kiss causes Charlie to freak out, doubting there is no way that Emerson could want her like she wants him. He informs her that he does, but there is too much between them right now and gives her more praise, which calms Charlie. A few days later, Emerson calls Beau to inform him that Charlie is working for him. When Charlie returns from the deli, getting their lunch later than usual because she walked, Emerson's confused and concerned to why she walked three miles in 45 degree weather and finds out it's because her car died. He informs Charlie to let him know things like this because he can and wants to help her. He winds up massaging her feet to take care of her. As the massage starts to take on a sexual tone, Bo calls Charlie in response to his dad's earlier message. Talk about like a cooler, man. Way to ruin a moment, Bo, and this won't be the last time that happens. Mm -mm. Bo is chewing her out for working with his dad and Charlie refuses to quit. Emerson changes the battery to Charlie's car. Charlie goes dress shopping for the club opening with her sister, who confronts her about the fact Charlie has been changing. Charlie reassures her sister her change is a good thing. Night of the club opening, Charlie is all dolled up, and Emerson finds her beautiful and lets her know it. The two wind up dancing, and she loves that no one is judging her, but there is a lingering longing eye on her from an older man in the crowd. While they dance, Charlie teases Emerson with a too bad you can't have a good secretary who's also a good sub. After some more dancing and some champagne, Charlie leaves Emerson's side to find the bathroom. While on her journey, she winds up in the VIP area and starts exploring the SPC rooms. Each room displays a different kind of kink. She finds herself back at the throne room and is witnessing a threesome and starts to get aroused. Emerson then approaches Charlie and asks if she's enjoying herself and holds her by the waist. How intimate. Emerson encourages Charlie to keep watching as one of the throne room purposes is for voyeurism. As she continues to watch, Emerson then encourages her to touch herself and she does bring herself to completion while also getting Emerson hard. After her orgasm, one of the women in the throne room who looks familiar to Charlie winks at her. This sends Charlie into a panic and she runs off to the bathroom. While in the bathroom, Charlie gets confronted by the winking woman who is Madame Kink. Madame Kink gives Charlie a confident boost, reminds her that she is gorgeous, and that Emerson is a very wanted man who couldn't keep his eyes off her the entire night. She also reminds her not to be nervous. SPC is a safe place, and not a place just for men either. SPC is a place to be free. Sounds like a good time to me. I know, right? On the ride home, Emerson informs Charlie that she can be a member of SPC, and she lets him know she doesn't want to go back without him. Emerson gives her a goodnight kiss when he drops her off, and she calls him Sir. After her evening at SPC and talk with Madam Kink, she is determined to learn what she wants, off to do more kink, especially submissive research. It's Monday and time for work, and Charlie is waiting for Emerson on her knees, tempting him to enter into the role of teaching her how to be a good sub. But only a part-time sub, as Emerson still wants her to just be Charlie. Also, sex is off of the table, because he says that being a sub is more than just the sexual aspect. So it's time for the first lesson. Neil next to him during a video conference call, and Charlie is into it. As much as Emerson is loving the new dynamic with Charlie, he is still struggling with the age gap and Charlie being his son's ex. Big reasons for the no sex rule, even though he has had sex with most of his fake secretaries in the past. Is it bad that I want to call them sex retaries? I know, me too. I was kind of hoping that that's what Sarah Kate would like write them as, like literally (laughs) sex (laughs) retaries. On one of the more normal work days, Emerson and Charlie are SPC and a formal special secretary is at the club and Charlotte is rude as fuck to her. This bratty behavior upsets Emerson as that is not the behavior that he's into because he's told her he doesn't do brats. While Emerson is giving a former secretary, now sex toy business owner, a tour of SPC, Charlie is summoned over by Drake to help Hunter make a sex toy choice for his wife. 
Drake winds up daring Charlie to try out the remote-controlled vibrating panties. She puts them on, and Drake starts fooling around with the remote as they start to battle for control of it. Emerson comes back, and he is not happy. Charlie and Emerson leave SPC and head to lunch, where Charlie is punished for her insolence with Emerson being in control of the remote and using it. During the pulsing panty exchange, they do come to an understanding of exclusivity to their dom-sub dynamic. They do come. (laughs) (laughs) After lunch, Charlie has Emerson keep the remote. The following day at work, Emerson must apologize to Charlie as her limit list was not completed when he punished her at lunch and he requests that she finish the form. Charlotte doesn't want to because then he will know all of her thoughts, wants, and desires, but not Emerson's, and she's not comfortable with the imbalance of power. Fair enough. Emerson admits in an outburst how much he wants her but feels he cannot have her because it would make him a bad father. Charlie finally, knowing where Emerson stands and not feeling like the wanting is one-sided, she finishes her list. Emerson was not in the office when she returned, when she turned in her list, so she goes out to find him, and he is working out upstairs. Yeah, he has a lot of uh, pent-up frustration that he needs to work out. (laughs) I mean, just the scene of, like, how he looked working out, I was like, ooh. Right? Yes, sir. They start to talk about how it seems like there is no avoiding and fighting their sexual chemistry and tension and are about to kiss when the doorbell rings. And shocking, it's Bo. Fucking cock block. Again. again. Bo has dropped by to get his portion of the deposit check finally. But when he sees Charlie, he asks her for a second chance. Emerson interrupts that conversation to give him the money and offers to give him extra as Bo is currently out of a job. Bo turns it down, stating money can't fix his problems with his dad. Emerson still gives him extra and suggests Bo take Charlie to dinner because he is caught back up in thinking she would not and can't be an option for him. Bo suggests ordering food at Charlie's place, a la Netflix and chill scenario. However, when they get there, Sophie is not happy about Charlie hanging out with Bo again. And Bo blames his dad for him being a bad boyfriend to Charlie and calls him a sex freak. And since his dad is one that he must be one too. And that's why he cheated and asked. So stupid. (laughs) I know, right? My dad likes sex, so I must really like it and I can't be faithful. This really does sound like only child syndrome, like to the extreme. Yeah. (laughs) And, you know, he asks her to take him back yet again. Charlie, thankfully, is not taking that bullshit of an excuse, because it is, and calls him out on his toxic behavior and informs him how SPC is actually empowering and liberating and takes him home. She is also charged up enough that she wants to confront and bang Emerson. Charlotte shows up to Emerson's demanding to hash things out and figure out why he's pushing her away. Emerson hates that he feels like their relationship can only be a secret And he doesn't want that for her. Charlie doesn't care. She wants him and will take him however she can get. Things have finally boiled over enough that Emerson and Charlie finally have sex. Woohoo! And apparently it's so good that Charlie feels she is ruined for other men now. She's also like 20 and he's 40. So he better blow her mind. That's all I'm saying. (laughs) (laughs) He's been around the block enough. And he's a part owner of a sex club. You better be like daddy energy. You know what I mean? You better come prepared. (laughs) Charlotte goes home wearing one of Emerson's shirts due to him shredding hers during their sexy time. Both are looking forward to work now that sex has been added to the dynamic. I think I would too. Yeah, right? The following workday, our good girl Charlie is waiting on her knees, and Emerson decides she's going to work in just her bra and panties that day. Which leads to on-the-clock fucking. Yay! (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, what's not to like about that? (laughs) At Sophie's birthday party, Charlie's mom can tell there's a difference with her and jokes that she must be getting some good sex. Mom! (laughs) If you only knew. Emerson shows up to the party. Surprise! (laughs) Surprise! (laughs) Gifting Sophie... A great gift. VIP tickets to the anime fest. Emerson winds up scoring an invite to family movie night because of this. 
Sophie was like, oh, you're in my good books now, buddy. Charlie's mom, to her surprise, is cool with Emerson. But she knows that her dad would not be if he was still around. But fuck that guy. Yeah. So who cares? While looking at family pictures, Emerson realizes that Sophie is trans. And Emerson is not phased or bothered by this revelation, which is a relief to Charlie. In large part because her dad could not take Sophie's coming out or transition and left. So I reiterate, fuck that dude. <laughs> yeah. Fuck him. Emerson admires how much Charlie loves her family and like especially how loyal she is to her sister. And after the sweet and tender moment, things between Emerson and Charlie start to turn sexy. And Emerson wants Charlie to use her words and find the confidence to express what she wants and needs. Charlie does as requested, and she wants to watch Emerson masturbate and finish on her chest. This turns into a mutual masturbation scene and a sleepover. And also Charlie doesn't, she lives with her mom, but it's in like a pool house. Pool house. Like, so mother-in-law guest suite thing, so it's like an unattached. It's a separate thing. Yeah. Work has been busy lately, not leaving as much time for play for Emerson and Charlie. Sad. And it's starting to take a toll on him. At SPC, there is going to be an auction, and Garrett thinks Charlie should sign up. An embarrassed Charlie declines, as she doesn't think she would bring in much money. A jealous Emerson shuts down the notion at first, but after talking to Garrett further, he thinks this may just be the thing to boost Charlie's self-confidence, because he's noticing the damage that Bo and Charlie's father has done to her sense of self-worth. So Emerson signs her up with the intention of him being the highest bidder. Emerson fucks Charlie right before the auction, and Eden, a.k.a. Madam Kink, helps Charlie get ready and calms her nerves, not only about the auction, but about her relationship with Emerson. As Eden has known him for a long time and can tell that he's never been interested in anyone like he is Charlie. After a bidding war for Charlie... Emerson eventually wins, having to fork over $75,000. Woo! Yikes. And Madam Kink only got $50,000. After Emerson wins Charlie, he leads her to a room in SPC to punish her for her doubting herself and, like, talking badly about herself. And he uses spanking and hot wax as a punishment and starts making Charlie, like, say... I'm worth it. I need to stop with my, you know, self-doubt behavior, which causes her to break down and get overwhelmed emotionally to the point where she's just like, Emerson, I need you to fuck me. And he obliges. I don't see why he wouldn't. During this sex scene, they both admit how they wish they could keep each other forever. And Emerson does request Charlie go home with him for aftercare after such an scene. Emerson's best friend and business partner, Garrett, finally calls him out on dating Charlie and lets him know that he knows she's Bo's ex. Garrett is not mad that he's dating her, but is disappointed that Emerson felt he couldn't confide in him. Garrett thinks that Charlie could be good for his friend, as he seems genuinely interested and happy with Charlie, and that he'll be there for him no matter what happens. Instead of the conversation with his bestie making him feel like he has the green light to proceed with Charlie, he uses it um, to start a fight with her over how it's impossible for things to work out, how it complicates things with Bo. Blah, 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 woe is Emerson. <laughs> Nothing gets resolved, but they do bang it out on the couch. Another workday in time to bust out the vibrating panties. Again, you know, for some all-day edging. Emerson and Charlie take lunch to their favorite diner. When they return to the house, Bo has stopped by for Fucking Bo, man. Always the worst times. Ah, uh, Bo. Just as things seem like they may be on, like, the way to, like, repairing themselves with, like, Bo and Emerson. Um, and Bo's, you know, about to leave. He grabs his car keys and also accidentally grabs the control to the vibrator that's still in Charlie's puss. And sets it off on, like, high. <laughs> and she definitely has a immediate reaction. Because she's been edged all day. <laughs> So um, the jig is up. Bo now has the confirmation that his dad is banging his ex. Yikes! That's not the way to learn about this no. situation. Emerson tried to downplay the whole situation, 
which angers Bo more and makes Charlie feel like shit. Yeah, if anything, it angers both of them more. Yeah. Because Charlie now feels like... She meant nothing. Yeah, like she's just another play thing. Yeah. So Charlie leaves because she can't continue to be with someone who won't put her first. A distraught Charlie gets pushed by her sister for Taco Tuesday, family tradition, and Sophie uses this opportunity to confide to Charlie that she's figured out the relationship between her and Emerson and the fact that Emerson is Bo's dad. They have a heart-to-heart about both of their confidences, about how Charlie admires Sophie, and Sophie's like, I learned it from you. And also, Sophie hated Bo. Yeah. And this is why. It was, like, up until Bo that, like, Charlie had the confidence. And when she started dating him is when it started to dwindle. And then with their dad leaving, that was kind of, like, the final nail in the self-esteem. Coffin. Yeah. (laughs) And then Sophie gives Charlie a final pep talk about how she doesn't think Emerson has changed Charlie. She thinks that he actually helped her get her confidence back and let her be herself. And Bo can get over it. Wise words from a 15-year-old. Right? (laughs) Charlie has been dodging calls and texts from Emerson and hasn't gotten any from Bo. And then Garrett texts her a picture of her and Emerson from the night of the SPC launch party. And she can see from the picture that Emerson thinks she's beautiful, but can't tell if he sees more than that. Bo shows up to Emerson's house to finally hear his dad out. And Emerson admits he's in love with Charlie. And it seems like Bo is finally ready to like let his hang-ups about his dad go, but is still going to need some time, but is willing to work on it. So yay, they're on the road to reconciliation. Right. Though we are a little mad because during that talk, Emerson did tell Bo he won't see Charlie if he's bothered by it. And obviously Bo's like, yeah, I'm bothered by it. And it's like, can't you just say what you want and take it at this point? Bo then heads to the skating rink to talk to Charlie to get her side. But Bo is harsher with Charlie than he was with his dad. Thankfully, Charlie calls him out about how Emerson treats her better than he ever did. And then Bo's like, well, guess what? My dad did tell me that he loves you and walks out. What a dick. Literally. He needs to grow up. For sure. Charlie decides to go to SPC. I mean, she is a member after all. And she winds up at the bar next to Eden. They chat, then Eden leads Charlie to one of the voyeur rooms, and they have a plan to make Emerson jealous and show him what he's missing. This is a great scene. (laughs) Yes, I loved this. And thankfully, Emerson is at the club and is getting chewed out by Maggie, another business partner. For him, like, being all sulky. Douchey. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And not, you know, going after his girl. And then she's like, oh, by the way, she's currently in room 12 with Eden. Emerson heads to the room and watches Eden tease Charlie. When the two women start to kiss, he storms in the room, kicks Eden out, and tries to storm off with Charlie. But Charlie holds her ground and explains all the ways that Emerson has hurt her and how he doesn't have a right to treat her like this. Then Emerson gets on his knees for and apologizes to her, begs for forgiveness, how he wants her to be his, He continues his apology by submitting to Charlie in the playroom. And they're also in the voyeur room. Yeah. But does he close the curtains? No. At some point? No, because he he realizes that she's into it. He thought about it, but he saw that, like, this was getting her hot and bothered and let it go. And then they do have sex in the playroom. And then Charlie leaves. She says, thanks for that dick, but... I'm out. We still have issues and you... This didn't solve them. No, you still got more groveling to to do. do. (laughs) Yes. That night, Charlie's dad shows up to the house unannounced, yelling for Charlie. Ugh. He makes Fuck this dude. Oh, it's so bad. He makes a horrible scene calling Charlie's mom out for being a terrible mother, calls Charlie out for being a member of SPC, and basically referring to her as a sex worker. As in a slut. Yeah. Yeah. Because one of his colleagues saw her at SPC. The night of the auction. Yeah. And then he's about to start in on Sophie. And both Charlie and her mom have had enough of his antics and they're not about to let him go there. And then her dad starts to get violent towards her mom, which is when Emerson and Bo show up and intervene. Because it turns out Sophie called Emerson when her dad showed up because she was scared. After a lot of fighting, 
and declarations and words. They finally get Charlie's dad to leave. Emerson and Bo also leave to discuss their issues, and Emerson informs his son of his intentions to date Charlie. Finally, he, like, puts his foot down. Bo kind of gives his blessing, even though he still isn't fully okay with it. Charlie, Sophie, and their mom have a PJ movie day after the traumatic events of the previous night. Fair. And Bo shows up to Charlie's and apologizes to her. Finally. <laughs> like an actual apology. <laughs> and gives her his blessing to be with his dad. And drops like a little nugget to expect a call from him. But instead, Charlie goes to Emerson's. And when he opens the door, he takes her. Immediately. They have sex and declare themselves like belonging to each other. In exchange, I love you. All that good stuff. Yeah. And Emerson and Charlie are officially together. She's still his secretary while being his partner in the bedroom. And his secretary. Yep. And the sex. Yeah, the secretary. She's 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 wearing a lot of hats. Yeah. At this point. <laughs> Thankfully, she's young. She she can do it. Yeah, she can keep up. <laughs> <laughs> she's got that <laughs> endurance. Yeah. And she's also in the process of moving in with Emerson. Charlie's mom is okay with the new arrangement, provided Taco Tuesday still happens, which Emerson and Bo have now joined. And Sophie and Bo are now getting along. And everything seems to be going great for this new little family dynamic. The end. That was praise. That was praise. By Sarah Kate. Okay, Alex, what was your favorite sexy time scene? All right, so my favorite tension moment was the vibrating panty lunch, Mm -hmm. which is like the day that she got the vibrating panties and Emerson takes her to lunch and is, you know, punishing her for like flirting with Garrett and being rude to his former secretary. And he's like making her admit stuff. And when she starts to lie or not like fully express herself, he like starts to buzz, buzz. That was a good tension moment. Yeah, and I think my favorite tension scene was the SPC club opening where Charlie and Emerson are watching the threesome in the throne room. So as they're watching the threesome, he has Charlie start touching herself, and then he pulls her dress up, panties to the side, and guides her fingers to to the point where she is, like, fucking herself. But he's still got that hand there. But he's kind of guiding her, essentially. Then she comes, once she orgasms, He pulls her fingers away and licks them clean. That was nice. That was a good scene. I think my favorite sex scene was the first one, which the first full-on sex scene didn't happen until 52% into the book. And, like, Emerson lifts Charlie against the wall and his bulge is, like, right up against her clit. And he says, and I quote, my girl wants this, doesn't she? Then get on your knees and take it out. (laughs) Yes, sir. (laughs) Right? Say less. (laughs) So Charlie, in a hurry, stumbles to get on her knees. Same. And asks nicely if she can please give him a blowjob. With permission granted, she goes to work. As Emerson is about to reach his climax, he gets Charlie off the floor and, like, drops her on his desk and, like, rips her top off. Which is then why she has to go home in his shirt. (laughs) And starts working his way down. He pushes her skirt up and begins to eat her out giving her orgasm number one, and now it's time to fuck, resulting in a mutual orgasm and the best sex of Charlie's life. And then they go upstairs for round two in and out. Yeah, that was a good one. I liked the one after the auction, even though it was a very, like, emotionally intense scene because Emerson is trying to get her to, like, have some, like, self-love and stop being so self-deprecating. And, like, obviously this makes Charlie kind of freak out and she starts, you know, crying as they're as he's using the wax and stuff on her. But I also think that this is like a very pivotal moment for them. And like specifically for Charlie as like a character, this is kind of where she starts to get her confidence back. And Emerson is really like a big He's the catalyst for that. Yeah, like he's he's played a really big role in that. Um, And like obviously this is also, I think, is this the first time that they have sex in the club? Second time because he did fuck her in the club right before she went on stage. Okay, so... Second he's like, time, I want you up there leaking my right come. But like also like leading up to this, he goes all caveman because, you know, he's in this betting war, essentially. 
And he like, as soon as he wins her, he is like up on that stage and he like, I'm pretty sure throws her over his shoulder. And it's just very much like alpha male type of thing. And then like takes her to a room and just like, it was a really good scene. It was. I'd like to give an honorable mention to like a funny sex scene. Okay. The one where she sucks his dick at the meeting. And that is a good one. (laughs) That's at the very end. Um, But when he has her in just like her bra and panties working for the day and he has her like come over to his desk and like sit on his lap and like read him an email. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he like starts to finger her while she's like reading the lines of like this like tax email. And then he just gets so worked up and like frustrated that he just like bends her over the desk and just starts fucking her and like degrading her for being a temptress. Like, it's like, dude, you're the one who told her to like walk around all day in her bra and panties. I know. Like you did this to yourself, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, you have no control. Why would you do this to yourself? Yeah. And then blame her. I It's it was it's, the, it's the role. It's, you know, like. Yeah. It's not serious, but. No, it's the dynamic, the role play, but it was it was funny. It was funny. And hot. Should we enter into our loves and hates? Yes. All right. So one thing that I really loved about this uh, book is I did enjoy the age gap romance. I'm, yeah. I'm a fan of the age gap. As long as they're legal and it's consensual. Well, yes. As long as it's <laughs> – Let's put the caveat on that real quick. Yeah, I think that the, I, I hope that that goes uns, unspoken, that that's, you know, the two things that you need to make an age gap romance work. But in this book, I really – I liked it because um, I haven't read, like, a lot of age gap books. I mean, I've, I've definitely read a few. But I, mean, I thought we've that done one, one birthday girl, but right, that was – Right. But I thought that this was done, like – really well and they even though there is a 20 year age gap between the two it kind of seemed like they meshed really well still and it wasn't like I didn't get the vibe that he was grooming her in any way or like weirded out it was just like yeah because he didn't know who she was until she showed up to his house to get that check right and he was automatically attracted to her yeah thinking that she was his new sub but yeah so I liked I liked that this in, incorporated the age gap. And this romance also did span, like, I think a good amount of time. Like, there was a lot of, like, days and weeks time jumps throughout the book. So it's not like this was zero to 60 in, like, yeah. Not to quote Rihanna. <laughs> zero to 60 and 3.5. <laughs> you got the keys. Shut, Shut up and drive this okay. bus. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and kind of going on that I really enjoyed the pacing of this book because it, it did seem very it said it seemed more realistic it definitely because of the dynamic between Emerson being the ex's dad right I think that how Sarah Kate wrote it made it believable like there were gonna be some hang-ups yeah like these characters were gonna go through some shit because that dynamic is not ideal. No, it's not an easy dynamic to, to navigate. navigate. So so I did like that it it did take over a course of months and that it was kind of a slow burn because like you mm-hmm. said, the first full out smutty scene was 52% through. Yeah. Which is pretty – like there's a lot of content before you even get to the, the smut. So yeah. I like that though in this setting. Something I loved um, were the chapter titles, how they were rules. Yes. That correlates with what was going on in that chapter. Yeah. Or kind of like And then also with the whole like BDSM negotiation contract things, how there's rules and limits. It was – I thought that was cute and I liked it. Yeah. And I will say you have not continued the series. No, I have not. But I have, have read – I've read all of them that have been published and that continues – so in all the books, you have, like, the chapters with the rules that have, like... Ooh, I'm excited. Yeah. So, like, I really... I enjoyed that. And they're all different. So it's, it's you know, it's not repetitive. Yeah. Oh, I'm excited. Because I do want to finish the series. Yeah. Oh, another thing that I do really love throughout the series, every book of that first chapter, seven years Oh, the conversation. Prior, the conversation about them talking about their dream of creating this like app or club and each book obviously has the point of view of the of the owner who's going to be starring so you get 
you get like the same conversations, but you get different insight and you get more added to the conversation that then builds into what their book is going to be, which that's is just cool. Oh, that's that's pretty loved cool. Loved it. Love it. I love when authors do that. I really liked the dynamic between Charlotte and Emerson, like in both the dom slash sub setting and then just their like personalities. Like I just, I feel like, I rooted for them. Mm -hmm. I liked them as individuals. I liked them together. I liked their growth kind of thing. Yeah, that was one of my loves, their their character growth for Charlie Emerson and also Bo. Yeah. I mean, his growth happened like at the last like 10%, but it was nice that you started to see that because then he winds up getting a book. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of nice that we are getting his backstory and seeing a little bit of growth, but he still has a long way to go. But, like, it gives me hope for him right. leading up to getting his book. Yeah. I also love Sophie and her relationship with Charlie. Oh, me too. I also loved I did not see the trans coming until it was presented, which I'm here for. Yeah. I, I wasn't expecting it, but it wasn't – I liked that kind of twist to the book. But I just think that, like, Charlie and Sophie, like, their conversations, their banter, just, like, how protective they are of each other. It was – it's just, like, very sweet. It was very – like, their relationship is sweet. And then to then learn that Sophie is trans, it's like – because the whole time you're just, like – Younger sister. Younger sister. That's what it is. And it's still – when you find out the trans speech, Sophie still is the younger sister. But it's like, oh, there's more depth and, like – because it also kind of – Sarah Kate kind of hints at their dad bailing because of something involving the family. But, like, you don't really know until the point where you find out about Sophie where you're like, oh, oh so that's what he couldn't deal with. And he's a piece of shit. And he's a piece of shit, yeah. Another character I loved was Madam Kink, Eden. Mm-hmm. And I loved how she also kind of played to Charlie getting her confidence um, more so on, like, her sexuality and, like, being free and letting go. And I'm excited that she's getting a book. That one hasn't been released yet, but um, I want Madam Kink's book. Yeah, that one's going to be good. I really enjoyed how Emerson calls Charlie Charlotte, has always called her Charlotte where everyone else calls her Charlie. And I don't know. I think that at the beginning it, like, frustrated Charlie because she kept being, like, It's Charlie. Stop calling me Charlotte. But like as their relationship kind of started to pick up and change, I think the fact that he kind of calls her like by her full name and it's the name that she doesn't normally go by. Like it more of an adult name. Yeah. But it's also like special because no one else calls her that but him. Yeah. And like I I liked that piece. I kind of wish as like their relationship since they are together now changes like I like the idea of like Charlotte being the dom sub name and then like their everyday life Charlie I don't think that's what it is though no but that's just that's what you like to think I like that idea yeah well because remember Bo would always Bo had a few points where he was like oh Charlotte yeah he's like yeah dad you're Charlotte now right because he got but her you Mm -hmm. know um, I, there's a lot of smut in this book, which was great, oh, but yeah. I think the thing that I love the most about this smut is that there was a good balance of smutty scenes taking place in and outside the club. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like we've read some, like, BDSM club books. Where this where, like, only happens there. Or it never happens there. That too. And it's like, I, I don't want it to be all the club and I don't want it all to be outside the club because if you're setting up the premise that this is about a sex club... And you don't have any scenes of them being in the club. It just doesn't make any sense. Find me in the club. <laughs> Bottle full of mama. mama. <laughs> but like, yeah. So I thought that Sarah Kate did a good job of incorporating both elements with the smut. And with this book, I loved all the research that Charlie does into BDSM and kinks and the submissive dynamic and like limits, the questionnaire being introduced. Yeah. Like, I felt like this highlighted... A very, not very, because there were some problems, but a more healthy depiction of a BDSM dom sub thing. There were mistakes, like, you know, Emerson punishing Charlie before her limit sheet was 
completed. But you are going to have hiccups in any relationship. And I feel like he's a very responsible sub. Or, sorry, Dom. Like, he... But then he would recognize when mistakes were made. And correct them. Right. So I feel like this was a very realistic and healthy, more healthy depiction of that. And my last love that I have is, in my opinion, the series only gets better. This book was really, really good. But I'm telling you, as the books continue... I read these over Christmas break when I had like two weeks off of work and I did not set these books down. Like I I was flying through them. Yeah, you were. And so if you're interested, I'm just going to do like a quick breakdown of the dynamics. Yes, please. So book two involves um, voyeurism and it is also a like stepbrother, stepsister romance. And that's Garrett and his stepsister. Book three is a thropple or thruple, sorry, um, that involves one, one of the owners, his wife, and the best friend. So it's the Drake, contractor. Hunter, Drake, Hunter, and then Hunter's wife. So they get into this, like, thruple situation. And then book four is Maggie's story, which is the only female club owner. And it's a reverse. She's the dom, and Bo is her sub. And... He has major growth, and by the end, I liked all of the characters. You know what I mean? Like, I I forgave Bo for him and Charlie, like, him being shitty. He was just lost and, like, needed some guidance. But, like, he finds it. He needed to grow up. (laughs) He finds it. Um, So if you have read Praise and you haven't continued the series, I, 10 out of 10, hardcore, recommend it because they only get better even though it's the same series, not repetitive at all. You get different shit in every book. The dynamics are so different. It's like a fresh read every single time. But you That's also good. get reoccurring characters. Any, like, the sex scenes don't feel repetitive? No. Since they all have, like, different kinks and dynamics Yeah, because, like, stuff. when you with Mia and Garrett, you get a lot of, like, voyeurism. She's also a cam girl. And he's a, he likes voyeurism. So they do a lot of, like more things targeted towards their kinks. With the thruple, obviously, you get a lot of threesomes, right? Okay. And then in Maggie's book, she's the dom. So, like, there are a lot of similar – there are more similarities between book four and book one, but it's a reversed. And, like, her kind of taming of the fuck boy is very different than, like, Emerson's training for Charlotte. Yeah. And there's also a pegging scene in that, which Alex. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. I okay. I have to finish this just so I can have that. Yeah, and it's worth it because, yeah. So they're all great, all great. So I do have a love slash hate. Okay. Kind of going into our hates. All right. Okay. Lay it on me. So my love hate was the auction. So I loved Emerson's thought process, but communicate. Charlie needed to work on her confidence and she needed like Emerson to push her to come out of this like self-pity, low self-esteem, low confidence mindset. But just to thrust her into this with her not understanding where he's coming from, I was like, I like the intention. I like the thought process behind it. But like the execution of it was bad. She could have had a little bit more notice than just what she got. Yeah. And because, like, she also was, like, low-key. I mean, Madam Kink was the one who kind of, like, calmed her down backstage. Mm -hmm. Like, she was kind of panicking. And who wouldn't? Like, she's never done something like this before. She doesn't know what to expect. And then her boss slash the guy who she's kind of interested in is, like, letting other guys bid on her. Like, and she doesn't know that Emerson is going to win. Well, he kind of lets her know that, like, that's his intention. But he could have done better. I just don't think it was enough. Nah. But it, but it still was, to be okay. it was it was a really good scene though. Like I I still liked it because I think that it was needed, but I just didn't like how. And it was a lot, especially with like her punishment directly afterwards yeah. when he does win. It yeah. it was just it was a lot. No wonder she like cried. Yeah, I would. <laughs> so I hated Emerson's like continue hang up over the age gap and Charlie being both. his actions contradicted his thoughts, and it just kind of became like redundant, repetitive, and annoying. No, I agree. Like fair concerns. I get it. 
but also kind of realistic because I feel like if someone yeah. was actually in that situation, even if they had the mindset of like, this is wrong, I can't do this, but you're thrown into a situation where you're around that person all day, every day, you think that most people are going to give in, even if they're kind of like mentally like, no, no, no. Like, but it did kind of get like, it just sucked that it was like the whole book. Yeah. Like he didn't get over it until the last page. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it was just like I wanted that to be over with sooner because it's like he chalked it up to like a failure without even actually trying. Yeah. So my – I only have two hates. My first hate is Bo. I hated Bo in this book. He's a POS towards Emerson and Charlie. Like the whole reason he doesn't talk to his dad is because his dad owns a club and thinks that he's like a degenerate. Yeah. And doesn't actually understand but won't actually listen either. Or do any research or But you do learn anything. you do learn that his mom has kind of been putting more in his ear. And feeding him, being like your she's the one that's like, Your dad is this, your dad is this because they're obviously not together. Yeah. And they never really were together. They just like kinda had a kid, like, oops. But they were never married or anything. But still it doesn't give that – it doesn't give an excuse to be a dick towards your dad or to Charlie. Like, the fact that he cheated, the fact that he was just very, like, emotionally degrading. Yeah. Like, not in a good way. He was so <laughs> bad to her. Yeah. And, like, even when they were broken up, he tried to, like – when he was at the mall with another girl, he was trying to control her. And I'm like, yeah, it was what so are you doing? Like, who do you think you are? It was so bad. I hated Charlie and Sophie's dad. Oh, yeah. That was my second. There was no redeeming qualities. Nope. I kind of do wish we got a little bit more with, like, what was the aftermath after that confrontation. Because he does, like, this isn't over. We're going to talk about this. kind of wanted to check in, like, please, for the safety and sake of Sophie, that he is not <laughs> coming back to end the Yeah. No, I don't think he, the rest of the series he's not really mentioned. And I mean, like, Sophie is kind of pops up here and there. So does obviously Charlotte. But the dad's never really mentioned again. So maybe Emerson just goes and beats him up. You know what I mean? I just kind of wanted, like, a better resolution with that because it was very kind of like, I'll be back. Right. This isn't over. Like, ominous. Yeah. (laughs) But, yeah. I think that was just for, like, the dramatic effect because, to be honest, he doesn't give me the vibe that he's – tough really like he kind of gives me that he's just hateful but once he's actually confronted he's gonna like run with his tail between his legs and then kind of just like cop out and be like oh i'll be back all right dude whatever you say well that was my only other hate do you have any other hates not really to be honest like yeah i thought this was a pretty good book there wasn't a lot that like irked me Uh uh-uh cool Yay. Yay. Want to cast this sucker? Yeah. And so for this, we're casting, obviously, Charlotte, Emerson, Bo, and Sophie. Make sure, once you listen to this part of the episode, to head over to our Instagram, where you can see some visuals, emotions and potions pod. Also, follow us, subscribe, all the things, emotions and potions pod. Yes. So without further ado. Who, my dear Ashton, do you have? casted to be charlotte charlie so i went with katherine langford she's from 13 reasons why she was in knives out she gives me very much she's kind of what i picture charlie looking like good choice I like yeah. her what about you i went with isabella merced um she was in dora the explorer the live action uh did she play dora yeah okay and um most recently in Rosalind. Okay. Oh, yeah. Cute. I like that. So for my Emerson, I casted, I feel like, the daddy of the zaddies. Okay. Eric Dane. I mean, I mean, Uh, you're not wrong. uh, Like, the silver fox. I don't think that um, Emerson is described as being a silver fox, but, like, I would not be mad if they took that direction in this movie. And he just, 
He was the first person I casted and was instantly the That's person I thought of. Yeah. Who did you cast as Emerson? I picked Luke Evans from Beauty and the Beast live action. The alien is just. Mm. That's another good one. He's a zaddy too. I'm here for that. So for my bow, I think that this one, it might be a controversial casting. I'm not 100% sure, but I went Ansel Egort. He's good looking because Bo's, Bo's obviously good looking. Like Eric Danes is dead. You know what I mean? Like he's, he's good looking. But he also gives me kind of like fuck boy vibes. And like oh, for very sure. punchable face too. Like for sure. My Bo is, I'm probably not saying the first name correctly. Apology. Dacre Montgomery. Okay. Um, Billy from Stranger Things. Oh, yeah. I like that casting. That's a good one. And I feel like him and Luke Evans. Yeah, they have they a very much could, good could give me. Yeah. Father, son. Dynamic. Yeah. I like that. That's a good one. And lastly, our Sophie. I casted Evie McDonald. Oh, she's she's And she's a rising star. She's like 16. And I think that her and uh, Catherine Langford look a lot alike. Like, it would be very believable to have them playing sisters. And I chose Josie Toa, who okay. is a part of the Save by the Bell and iCarly reboot. Very cool. Former Disney star. You love casting some former Disney Channel stars. Yeah. You do. Yeah. You do. I don't I know do. if it's on purpose or – It's not. It, it, <laughs> it just, just It just <laughs> it works out that way sometimes. <laughs> That's funny. Well, those are our casting. So, like I said earlier – Head over to our Emotions and Potions social media pages if you would like to see some visuals. Yes. All right. Let's move into our song choices. Got to give this a playlist. Yeah. And, of course, the full playlist with, like, a gazillion songs is on Spotify, Emotions and Potions Pod. And it's under praise. Yeah. It's not hard to find once you're there. Give it a heart. Okay, I'm going to start with Charlotte's low self-esteem song, and that is Don't Let Me Get Me by Pink. Oh, such a good song. Such a good song. A nice throwback. Right? All right, my first one is Charlie and Emerson's Office Song, Work From Home, Fifth Harmony. I knew that was coming. You have mentioned that on a few (laughs) occasions, that that song you added to the playlist. I mean, is it not perfect? (laughs) No, it is. Um, my Emerson Dom song towards Charlotte is Look At Me by Why Don't We? Because he's always telling her to like, you know, look at me as up here. Yeah. Super funny because I have an Emerson Dom song. Ooh, what's yours? (laughs) Do It For Me by Rosen. Good one. That's a good smutty book song for sure. Like that. So I also have Sub Charlotte's theme song. Okay. And that is Your Wish Is My Command by Kim Petras. Yeah. And that whole song is just very sexy, too. I mean, and Your Wish Is My Command. I mean, she's a sub, and she is not a bratty sub, so she will do what she is told. Yeah, she will. When she's told. <laughs> Except for that one time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my next category is Charlie's Point of View song of Emerson and the SPC Adventures. Oh, okay. My Oh My. Camila Cabello. Yes. That's a good one. All right. I'm liking these so far. These are all good. So my Charlotte coming into herself after the bow split and when she's starting to kind of get her confidence back, Since You've Been Gone by Kelly Clarkson. Just who doesn't want to rock out to that? You know what I mean? That's such a good, such a good one. I know. Um, I also have a song for Bo. Okay. Like, well, song to Bo from Charlie. Um, shout out to my ex. Little mix. Shout out to my ex. Yes. I'm out there getting fed and sex <laughs> with your dad. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Um, so we didn't really like touch on this in the plot point, but Charlotte wasn't really like ever moved by Emerson having like money. Mm-hmm. So I have Charlotte towards Emerson's money and status. And that's that don't impress me much by Shania Twain. <laughs> Yes. I thought that was really accurate. Beautiful. Love it. So I got a song for um, Charlie being done with Emerson. Okay. And like, especially the night at SPC with Eden, begging on your knees, Victoria Justice. 
Nice. I do like that song. Well, have you begging on your knees for me? Yes. And she did. She did. Um, so I have Charlotte and Emerson's fear of the other ending things with them because that was a very big theme throughout this book. And it's Let Me Down Slowly by Alec Benjamin and Alessia Kakara. I love that song. It's so pretty. Yeah, it is. But it's also like I'm sad. Yeah. Because it's like, if you're going to leave me, just let me down slowly. I mean, if you're going to let me down, please do it that way. Yeah, right. My last one is um, a song for not wanting to be a secret. Ooh, okay. Love in the Dark, Adele. Ooh, got to throw a good Adele song on there. Mm -hmm. That one's good. And my last song is Charlotte's Love Song to Emerson. And that is Skin Tight by Nikki Heaton. Yeah. And that's Mm. just, it's like a love song, but it's still kind of like spicy. Yes. So I thought it was very fitting. Agreed. Well, great mini playlist. Um, Check out the full one again. Lots of good songs. Lots of bangers. Yep. Gets Lo- you in the mood. Lots of sexy songs because this was a very sexy book. Yes. It'll definitely get you in the mindset if you are reading praise, if you've read praise. Um, so let's get into those ratings. All right. So my spice rating, I gave this a 4-3 out of 5. Only because... I feel like the rest of the season or the rest of the series gets a lot spicier than this. Okay. Fair. So I still think a 4 3 is pretty high, though. I have not read the rest of the series. Right. So I gave it a 4 5. I mean, that's only 0. 0.2 higher than me. Yeah. That's like in the same realm. Yeah. So smutty. Because it was definitely kinky. I don't think it was five worthy because nothing traumatized me. And my overall ranking, I gave this a 9 out of 10. I, I really liked it. I gave it an 8 out of 10. Okay. I really liked it too. Yeah. Slightly wanted a little bit more, but like, I don't know what. Right. I think maybe because you have me so hyped for the next ones that I'm like, all right, I'm going to allow some wiggle room here. Well, see, the thing is, even though I think the series gets better, I really think all of the books are like a 9 out of 10. Like, they're all really good. Because I don't, I never really give like 10 out of 10, but I give out a lot of nines. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Nines, nines are my 9. happy. Vibes. Nines are my happy place. If I really like a book, I'm giving it like a nine out of 10. So I do think that the rest of the series is kind of in that realm, but it just, mwah, chef's kiss. Sarah Kate did really well on the series, on this book. So I'm guessing that means it's a love letter for you. Oh, for sure. And it's a love letter for the whole series for me. It is also a love letter for me. Yeah. It was a good read. I can't give you a letter on the series yet because I haven't read it. Read this one. But and you will once you do. Yeah. Because I already know. So, yeah. Love letter, hands down. Sarah Praise Kate. Sarah Kate, part of the Salacious Players Club series. It's on Kindle Unlimited. They're all on Kindle Unlimited. Also really, beautiful. Yeah. Really easy reads. Quick reads. <laughs> yeah. Well, there we go. Well, that's another episode for us. Of Emotions and Potions, a love <laughs> slash hate letter to. With your hosts. Ashton. And Alex. And this was a love letter to Praise by Sarah Kate. And until next time. Bye. bye.